Welcome back once again. I am still Mr. Gofton. Uh, we are still in quarantine, and I am still talking about drills that you can do um, to, to train up melee, and particularly right now, drills to do once you're back at your practice, you have lots of fighters, or, you know, if you don't have a lot of fighters at your local practice, regional training, or kingdom training. Um, if I, I did the first part of this video, you should go watch that, and I've done four videos previous to this um, about how to train one, you know, train on your own for melee, how to train with two people for melee, and how to train for, with three people for melee. And then there's the entire rest of this melee on lockdown series that I've been doing that, uh, you know, if you've taken the time to watch those, thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, we talked through the first three training methods um, with many people, which is uh, cross training uh, with, with uh, team sports like soccer and uh, ultimate frisbee um, are just the two that I go to because people generally are willing to play those. Uh, if you say, hey, let's play rugby, people get hesitant. Uh, and those are easy to, to do. You bring a disc or a ball to practice. Um, the next one, the gauntlet, the lineup and fight one-on-one, -on -one, but fight one-on-one, -on -one, boom, 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 boom. Not just one-on-one, 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 one-on-one. One -on -one, one -on -one, one -on -one, one -on -one. Um, and the zipper drill, the up the line. Yeah. Now we're going to talk through kind of um, a, a vaguer concept of a drill, which is uh, what I call drill the thing you want to do better. Um, and it's not any particular format. It is if you want to get better at commanding, you make people command. Um, and how do you how do you how do you force people to command? You say um, nobody gets to talk, nobody gets to do anything until told so, told to do it by the commander. You limit everything, limit all the variables. Remember, I don't, you know, I I say limit all the variables to the point of everybody gets single forty two inch sword if you're drilling melee, um, if you're training melee skills take out every variable except the skills that you're working on. So if you again, if you want to work on command, then everybody shuts up and nobody moves unless they're told to. You have your one commander over here and your one commander over here, and it's their job to make everything happen. Advance. Minge. Halt. 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 Well, stay the line, not halt. Stay the line. Fight. And then, you know, assume everybody will fight when they're at measure. But then, you know, Right flank, run out, run. And you can have plans if you want. It's also fun to say no plans, say like no talking. Everybody line up, yeah, no talking before lay on, line up, go. And then the commander has to command the entire action after lay on starts. That's fun. That is good training for how to command. Um, again, and it's an example. You wanna train something, you limit all the other variables until that is the option that they have. If you want to train Line fighting, um, I kind of demonstrated this in the two, three, four person video. Um, you take away flanks, so you set up, you know, barriers to keep anybody from flanking. Now it has to be a line fight. Um, if you want to train running the flank, um, you need to make sure that one side doesn't know that's necessarily the only option. Some, and then with some of this, you know, you need to make sure that sometimes if one side is training to do a particular action, the other side doesn't forewarned so that they can't preemptively set up to, uh, to, to disrupt it. Um, but if you're training, you know, you're only allowed to flank. Okay, these two lines come to engagement and maybe they're doing something, but at some point the commander has to yell, run right, and, and the side runs right. Um, and uh, maybe they can yell it before they get to engagement. Maybe they can only yell it after engagement when they just see that the moment is right. So that is the drill to do the thing you want to work on. Um, next, really the rest of this is kind of melee games. Um, as mentioned in the previous video, yesterday I got a gift from my scholar of a bunch of pirate toys. Pirate figurines because again I should have 
in, in his opinion, I should have people with swords um, for uh, uh, for melee training videos. Who knew? Um, and the first one of these that I, the, the first of the uh, games that I like to use is Sharks and Minnows. Um, British Bulldogs, I think, is also what it's called uh, if you're doing it on land and not in a pool like a Florida kid did. Um, so you take our murderous types, our predators, uh, you know, your mods, your, your high-end melee fighters, because not all mods are. Um, so your high-end melee fighters. And you set them up over here. And the job of our rabble is to get across the victory line identified by the car, the wood car here, um, to get across the victory line intact. And how do you define intact? Well, the first time I just kind of run it and see what happens. Um, if what happens is they get four people across out of 10, then, and, and those four people straggle across, then the next time the goal is to get four people across together in unison. Um, you know, the, 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 and unison you get to define, you get to say, okay, you know, they have to step across together. They have to step across within five seconds of each other. They have to be a formed cohesive unit when they, when they make their completion of the, the goal. Um, look, they get five people across together cohesively. The next time, six people. The next time, um, six people in less than the time that took the last time. And you start just moving that bar so that more unit cohesion, more survival, um, more everything is the purpose, is, is the goal. Uh, do this with DFB in place because otherwise it's kind of dumb. Because um, DFB, you know, because the goal really is to have our predators disrupting this act, this body as much as possible. Um, if they all survive, but they all straggle across, that's useless because what this really represents is, uh, you know, say over here, the enemy is defending a flag. We have this body of, four, of, of, of soldiers that we're sending to smash through the enemy line, but the enemy sent out these skirmishers. And if the skirmishers disrupt this body, even if they all get there eventually, um, if they only get there in dribs and drabs, they're not going to do any good over here. They need to hit it in force. So this is training up the ability for our rabble, grunts, militia, whatever you want to think of them as, whatever polite term you'd prefer to use, um, they need to be able to hit as a cohesive force. And this is training up their ability to remain a cohesive force even when uh, threatened and disrupted. Um, so yeah, yeah the, the predators are going to flank out here to try to draw off some, some people. And since these predators are big threats, they're going to have to draw off like two people, maybe. Um, until one of these people realizes that it's okay if they die. If the rest of this gets here and the predator only gets to kill this one person, only gets to kill this one person, and maybe all of this gets to mob this last one and break through, well, that's a nice cohesive unit that just hit that line. These two people are, yeah, they're dead, but these people are catching up by the time this unit hits here. Eh, the flag's taken. Um, and it and gives you that, that learning opportunity of, of what matters and how to uh, keep your eye on the goal, the Wistrix fourth rule. Um, remember the goal. This is, in fact, the most important rule. Winning, win, rather than just kill the other person or stay alive, win. Um, and it trains up the ability for, you know, our, our rabble to realize that they just have to stay alive. They just have to, you know, keep backing up and keep at measure. And, and you know, if the, the predator is throwing something, you know, just, just stay between the predator and the body. And this person can stay alive, even if they're just relatively new. Um, but it trains that confidence in their ability to do that. And then say you have people that you want to start training up as skirmishers. Um, that, that have that skill, they have the agility, they have the mobility, they have the capacity to manifest a threat. Okay, so then you start rotating them out. You know, great. Now, pirate here gets to be a predator. Um, 
pirate captain, maybe? Yeah, probably captain. Um, now that, you know, they get to be a predator. Um, and then you can start throwing in things like, hey, you know, whoever's in command is uh, the only person who can talk this through, or is, can talk our body through here. Um, so yeah, Sharks and Menace, highly useful to train lots of, of skills. The last thing is uh, melee games. Um, and those, this is kind of a melee game already, but um, things like uh, Snowball Melee or the We Win Melee, which is starts off as a grand melee, everybody for themselves. Uh, hopefully you've all done these. Um, you start off in a circle. You can't attack the person to the right or left of you. So, you know, these two are going to come out and fight. Whoever w wins here um, is going to, now they're on the same team together. Um, and then, you know, meanwhile, over here, these people are fighting. Maybe these two people are tag teaming this person, not realizing that, hey, you know, if blue kills this person, now that's a two on one, and now that's really a three person unit. Um, and then everybody at the end is on the same team. Yay, we win! Uh, you can also have the Valhalla melee, which is marvelous, and it is uh, uh, field awareness and cardio and. You know, it's a great way. If you want to fight car, uh, fight melee for 45 minutes, it, you can do it with this, which is, um, say, blue and purple go out and they fight. Uh, blue kills purple. Purple goes to the sidelines. When blue gets killed, purple comes back in. And then whoever killed blue, when that person dies, blue comes back in. Um, and so the victory condition is you have to kill everybody without dying. Uh, meanwhile, everybody's cycling in and out, and, you know, maybe if, if blue kills purple over here, and then it's engaged over here, and uh, uh, we need to be engaged against red, red, um, and red kills blue, purple is coming in right behind red. I have DFB. It's great. DFB'd, and now blue is coming back in. <laughs> um, and it gets chaotic, and so you've got the cardio, you've got uh, a field awareness going on, um, yeah, it's ex excellent. Uh, then you have games like um, Blood of Heroes or Jugger, uh, Dog Ball, depending on what you want to call it, and Bushkazi. And you can find lots of information of, about these really out there on Google. Or uh, if you go up on SCA Rapier and ask what the rules are. Um, heavy, player, heavy fighters like to play uh, Blood of Heroes, Jugger, uh, Dog Ball uh, a lot. They have rules specific to which arm armament each person in each position can carry. Eh? You can do that, or you can just, you know, the quick gets to carry the, the dog skull and nobody else does. Um, and those are, and you know, Capture the Flag is a melee game. Uh, like Team Fortress Capture the Flag, not the whole take and hold the flag, but like grab the flag, run it back. Um, that's another melee game. And, and they all train melee skills um and you know if you want to to have your melee practice be more than now we're going to fight a three on three or now we're going to fight five on five or five on four uh, play games because melee is a team sport and you should you know treat it as one all right uh not sure what I'll be doing next. Might be five-man tactics. Uh, until then, stay healthy. I will see you on the field.